Hi everyone, welcome to the Claremont College's information session. The purpose of this event is for you to learn more about the Claremont College's consortium as a whole, but also each school individually. Before I turn over uh, the mic to my colleagues for introductions, I just want to give a few reminders. Uh, this session will last about one hour, with the first 45 minutes of the presentation, uh, first 45 minutes of presentation, and the last 15 minutes for questions and answers. The panelists will, we will introduce ourselves, and then I will provide a five minute overview of the Claremont Colleges, and the bulk of the remaining time will be each of us presenting about our own institution. Lastly, some of you have already noticed this, you're not on audio or video, but you can engage with us via the Q&A box that you should see at the bottom of your screen. You can ask questions at any point during the session, and we'll do our best to answer them. Uh, you may choose to also ask questions anonymously or not. Okay, so with all that said, I'll start the introductions with myself. My name is Anna Marie Wood. I'm Senior Assistant Director of Admission at Scripps College. I'm also an alumna from Scripps in the class of 2013, so I love to talk about Scripps and the Claremont Colleges any chance I get. I will now turn it over to Tom. You can introduce yourself. All right. Thanks so much, Anne-Marie. Hi, everyone. My name is Tom Campbell. I'm one of the assistant deans of admission at Pomona College. Um, I've been with the college for three years, so not an alum, but I have like to think I've learned a thing or two in my time in the rodeo. So happy to be here with you all to share a little bit more about Pomona and the Claremont Colleges. Um, and I'll turn things over to Sam. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. I'm Sam, an admission officer at Claremont Mechanic College. I've been here for about two years. There's a lot of things that I really think are special about the Claremont College Consortium. So really happy for y'all to learn more about us and to share more information about uh, Claremont Mechanic College in particular. I'll pass it over to my colleague Roberto at Harvey Mudd. Hi everyone, I'm Roberto Pena. I'm an assistant director of admissions here at Harvey Mudd College and um, not an alum as well. I've been here for almost a little under four years and Similar to Tom, I'm excited to talk to you about Harvey Mudd and um, definitely we will be doing that. So pass it over to Alex. Hi everyone, my name is Alex Morris and I'm an admission counselor with Pitzer College, finishing up my second year here. Uh, and I'm one of Pitzer's number one fans. So I'm excited to share with you all about it today. Awesome, thank you so much. As you can see, there's a you know, variety of student people, like I went to Scripps, but even if we didn't, we love the colleges we represent. I like to think of everyone as like an honorary alum. <laughs> um, okay, so welcome to the Claremont Colleges. We are a group, a consortium of five undergraduate colleges, Pomona College, Scripps College, Claremont McKenna College, Harvey Mudd College, and Pitzer College. It's a lot of times to say the word college. And two graduate institutions, Claremont Graduate University and the Keck Graduate Institute. The Claremont Colleges, also referred to as the five C's or the seven C's, have a structure and organization that is unique in American higher education. And I'll be honest with you, I try not to use the word unique a lot in admissions presentations, um, but I would say that our group really is. Each college is independent. Each college has its own curriculum, professors, and personality. We also have our own admission processes and policies. I know this is a common question that we get asked. You would apply to each of us separately. We don't share applicant information. Um, but there is a lot that we do share once you're a student here. We share vital campus resources, uh, including like certain academic programs, the library, athletic teams, clubs and organizations, campus safety, a health center, and so on. Uh, we also have a robust cross-registration system. I think that this is one of the most fascinating things that we do well. Um, this means that a student at, say, Pitzer could take a class at Pomona. A Harvey Mudd student could take a class at Scripps, and so on. These classes are on the same academic portal system. So when you go up to sign up for a class, they're all there. So it makes the logistics pretty easy. And in general, most classes across the five schools are available to most students. As small colleges, we typically don't have to deal with things like impacted majors or over-enrolled classes. So generally speaking, you're able to take advantage of this amazing cross-registration system. And all of this happens in one square mile in beautiful Southern California, just about an hour outside of Los Angeles. And when I say one square mile, that's very, very close. Walking distance uh, is what the schools are, you know, how far away the schools are from each other. Um, the only thing that separates our schools are, you know, small neighborhood streets and sidewalks. In fact, my dorm room when I was at the student at Scripps was actually closer to the dining hall at Harvey Mudd College than it was to the dining hall at Scripps College. So if I wanted to save myself the very long 45 seconds in the morning on the way to class, I almost always would stop by Mudd's dining hall instead of my own. And that is something that you can do across the consortium. 
So uh, a little bit of history for you. This consortium began almost 100 years ago in 1925 by Pomona College's president, James Blaisdell, working with Ellen Browning Scripps, uh, who went on to start Scripps. Uh, and they proposed this sort of university design inspired by Oxford in England. They wanted what a small college could provide, like personal attention, academic flexibility, but with the resources of a large university. And today, that is what we offer. We like to say the best of both worlds. You have the small college experience, but in a big school setting. So the plan way back then was to start a college in each decade of the 1900s. Scripps College was founded in 1926. Then came Claremont McKenna College. We refer to them as CMC in 1946, Harvey Mudd in 55, and Pitzer College in 1963. So the reason why I like to share this mini history lesson is because you might be wondering, okay, so I get that each school is different, but like what makes them different? And why would I consider one of you over another? Each of us is so distinct. And I like to think that our history, you know, when we were founded and why, shed some light on these differences. For example, Scripps College was founded in 1926. After the passing of the 19th Amendment, we were founded as a women's college and we still are today. CMC was founded after World War II. Harvey Mudd College was founded during the time of the space race. If you know anything about Mudd, if you don't, you'll learn more, but you know that they like science and engineering. So that kind of reflects when they were founded. And the same thing for Pitzer, which was the last school in the 1960s. That was a time of civil rights and social movements in the US, something that they still value very much today. So when each college was founded, it can kind of give you an idea of what makes us different, what our values are, and what motivates us as we think about and shape the future of our institutions. So what I love about the Claremont Colleges is also that we are all liberal arts colleges. So it doesn't really matter which one of us you go to, you're going to get the benefits of a liberal arts college in that sense. You're going to have small class sizes. Our averages range from like around 15 students. Uh, these classes will be taught by professors who will know your name. Um, and they lead classes that are generally, you know, very discussion based. So you will be a big fish in a small pond. If that freaks you out and you're thinking, oh, no, 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 that's way too small. I don't want to do that. That sounds horrible. Um, don't worry, because we are also all in one square mile consortium. So you get that big school experience at the same time that you get the benefits that a small school provides. So in terms of numbers, big school benefits, over 6,000 students, over 2,000 classes, you know, 17 different dining hall and eateries, and the numbers go on. One of my favorite numbers to share though is about athletics. So you might be thinking, oh, there's five schools. They probably have, you know, five different sports teams. That would make sense. Or maybe they come together and have one team. That would also make sense. Um, but we like to complicate things a little bit in Claremont. So we actually don't do either of those options. What we do instead is that the five schools come together and then we divide into two teams. The first team is uh, CMS, which stands for uh, CMC, Harvey Mudd and Scripps. The other team is called Pomona Pitzer, and you can imagine that is from Pomona College and Pitzer College. So actually both of these teams, CMS and Pomona Pitzer, we both play in NCAA Division III, which means that we do play against each other. We are right across the street, which makes a home game also an away game. It's just weird if you think about it, because let's say you go to Scripps, um, which means that you, know, you, you root for and play in CMS, but if you have a friend at Pomona, which you probably will, if it's game day, they are not your friend. So. You know, think about if your high school has a sports rivalry with another school in town, but now imagine that those two high schools share classes and you do clubs with students from those schools and, you know, that's kind of how it works here. You're athletic rivals, but you're also best friends. It's, it's kind of what's wild, but it's just another thing that, again, makes our colleges unique. So I mentioned that we are all small liberal arts colleges. Uh, what's fascinating about this is that we each approach the liberal arts in a different way. I like to say that we have our own flavor of the liberal arts. So now we are gonna spend about five to seven minutes talking about our colleges and what makes us different. So with that said, I, I'm done with my uh, overview of the Claremont Colleges and I will turn it over to my colleague from Pomona College, Tom. All righty, thanks so much, Anne-Marie. So um, oftentimes, you know, Pomona, we get a lot of questions, especially when we present with the other Claremont Colleges about, all right, well, What's Pomona's thing? Because I hear about, you know, Pitzer with the civil rights movement and I heard about Scripps with the women's suffrage movement, but like Pomona, you don't really seem to have a thing. And the sheer reality is that we really don't. So Pomona kind of preceded the idea of the consortium. And I guess if you were to think of it as an identity crisis or a broad catch-all, you know, either way you want to approach that topic, I think that is pretty accurate. Um, so a good way to kind of understand Pomona is that we were founded um, in 1887 to be a college of the New England type in Southern California. So the founders had all attend small liberal arts colleges 
um, in New England, such as Williams, Bowdoin, Amherst, Dartmouth, and they wanted to recreate that intimate relationship-based education on the West Coast. So kind of bridging the traditions of the liberal arts from New England with the innovation and the spirit and entrepreneurship of the West Coast of going against the grain, of be, not being afraid to be different, whether that's with you know, tech advances in Silicon Valley or, you know, bringing, you know, the world to life through the silver screen in Hollywood, right? California often brings together these ideas of innovation and entrepreneurship and definitely Pomona tries to merge those two worlds together um, within the framework of the liberal arts. Um, but I know that's not a really satisfying answer because you kind of want to get to know Pomona's thing in the grand scheme of the consortium. So um, the best way that I like to describe Pomona and its uh, qualities of the student body are with three adjectives and those are eager, thoughtful, and reverent. Um, and those are actually uh, adjectives that were written by James Blaisdell, who is Pomona College's fourth president and the visionary behind the consortium. And it's actually a quote that is on our college gates. There's a great Pomona tradition where all the first year students um, on the very first day of orientation, they run through the gates together. And you know, it's kind of a symbolic ushering in of your time as a Pomona student. And those three adjectives, Pomona students are coming from so many different backgrounds and interests and perspectives. And they're excited to go to a college that has 48 different majors that has students that are spread across the natural sciences, social sciences, arts and humanities, um, and interdisciplinary majors. However, they're excited to be surrounded by people who are equally eager, thoughtful, and reverent. Um, and what are they eager about? They're eager to get to know each other. They're eager to, eager to build community. Pomona is a highly residential school. 94% of our students live on campus for all four years and housing is guaranteed all four years. So it's definitely a place where you're building community alongside your, your fellow students. And a way that Pomona approaches that is through a program called the Sponsor Program. So the Sponsor Program is a residential program where students live together on a hallway of 15 students. And yes, they're all very different than you, but you're all paired together for a specific intentional reason. You all either are really into Harry Potter or you all really like anime or there was something about your housing application that made the housing committee be like, gee, these 15 people, I think they'd really like to live together um, and, and kind of ease that transition from high school to college. Um, so having that kind of residential unit and you're led by two sophomore students who are mentors who have volunteered their time as sophomores to live with first years and help you get acclimated to campus, help you get to, to get to know the most of the five C's and learn which one has the best almond butter in their dining halls, right? And if they love you, they'll tell you it's Pitzer because that's an undeniable fact. I'm happy to, that's on period. Um, but also if you have more intentional academic questions like, oh, I'm interested in a public policy analysis class with David Menifee Leiby, you know, what's his class like? What are his, what is uh, his curriculum like? Um, having those intentional academic questions as well as the more superfluous student life questions that a sophomore mentor can be there for you really helps you kind of get to be eager about the community that you're joining. Um, they're also thoughtful, right? Pomona students, they are really excited to take the lessons that they learned um, in the classroom into the real world. Um, Pomona is really much a champion of the liberal arts. So one thing that we introduce to our students in our curriculum, um, all students at the college, they have 48 majors to choose from and they have until the end of their sophomore year to decide. Um, but everyone has to take a critical inquiry seminar class at the first moment that they arrive at the college. Um, and this seminar, the one that I like to, they're always different every year. The professors really have them try to be the most, the biggest champions of, um, I guess, interdisciplinary studies. And the one that I like to reference the most is a class that was called the violin as a symbol for evil. So I don't know if there's any violin players on the uh, session today, but I have some jarring evidence to share with you um, that this class investigated. And basically what the class did was it looked at all of these different biblical and religious texts and pieces of literature. Um, and they found that there was a statistical higher correlation with negative personality characteristics with violin players more than any other instruments. And the whole point of this class is to ask those big why questions. Why is that? You know, is there a certain pitch or reverberation that the violin emits that causes us to feel a certain way? Do we psychologically process the music differently, right? So that is something that this, um, this class really helps introduce to students that Pomona's approach to education and to being thoughtful is that the world is not black and white. And for you to be able to solve problems and adapt to challenges that come your way, whether that's a pandemic, whether that is other challenges that you may be facing, being adaptable and flexible and being able to switch course and think about things from a different perspective is absolutely essential to being a successful human after you graduate. Um, and the last adjective I like to talk about is reverent. So um, students at Pomona are reverent. What that means is that they have deep respect and admiration. And I, I like to say that Pomona students really find that out with one another. So especially because Pomona is such a highly diverse college, according to niche.com, actually Pomona is the most diverse college in the United States. Um, and that comes not just in terms of racial and ethnic diversity, um, religious diversity, uh, diversity of sexual, sexual you know, orientations and gender identities, but also perspectives and lived experiences. So for example, when I first um, interviewed at Pomona for the job, the man who took me on my um, tour was a man named Mo Dyson. He's actually a transgender male, uh, 
veteran of the United States Marines, a transfer student. And, you know, to hear him talk about kind of being accepted at Pomona and coming in as a non-traditional age student who has had a very different lived experience than many of the students who are coming right from high school to college. That for me was very telling that Pomona really walks the walk and these students really do adhere to these values and these qualities and really are eager, thoughtful and reverent and want to make a difference. And that's something that I definitely think is really telling about the college. And that was a moment to me that really showed me that respect for one another and respect for difference and respect for different perspectives is what Pomona really tries to celebrate and champion with its curriculum, with its environment, with its intimate faculty and student relationships, um, and with the way that it presents itself to the world. So um, with that, I'd like to turn things over to uh, Anna Marie to talk a little bit more in depth about scripts. Awesome. Thank you so much, Tom. That was really insightful. And I know I was muted and probably off video, but I, I chuckled at quite a few things you said. So thank you. <laughs> um, so again, my, my name is Anna Marie Wood. And I, like I said, I'm Senior Assistant Director of Admission at Scripps, also a graduate from the class of 2013. Um, my first memory at Scripps is, is walking up to Honnold Gateway, which I think actually you'll see a photo of in the next slide. Um, you know, Tom at Pomona talked to quite a bit about, uh, you know, gates and quotes. And there's the one that we have as well. And it's really at the main entrance of our campus. And we're really proud of it. But it's a quote by our founder um, at Honnold Gateway, uh, our founder Ellen Brenning Scripps. And she said that the paramount obligation of a college is to develop in its students the ability to think clearly and independently and the ability to live confidently, courageously, and hopefully. So we live by these words every day at Scripps. Oh yeah, look, there's the gate. Um, so we live by these words every day at Scripps in our classroom environment, in the residential experience, and in our mission as a women's college. You've already learned a lot about the benefits of a small liberal arts college, and those all ring true at Scripps. So something distinctive that we have at Scripps is called the Core Curriculum in Interdisciplinary Humanities, which is a mouthful to say, so we just refer to it as Core. Core is the hallmark of a Scripps education. It's a sequence of three classes that all students take in the first year and a half at Scripps. The first class in the sequence, called Core One, is a shared academic experience because all first year students are automatically enrolled in the exact same Core One class. So this class combines lectures with small group discussions, and it's also team taught by a group of 16 Scripps professors who all represent different academic areas. So like politics, but math and science and art. And they collectively design and teach this class. What they also do is they come up with a theme for the class. The theme for this year's Core One is truth. So the class title is just simply called Truth. So the purpose of, the purpose of Core is to learn um, how, to, how to analyze, to think about the way that you think, question the assumptions you have. Um, so with the topic of truth, students and professors are asking these hard questions, like who has the authority to decide the truth? And what if you disagree with it? Also, what is truth? <laughs> And because this class is interdisciplinary, you will explore the concept of truth from different perspectives, say from a mathematical perspective, when it's you know a math professor's turn to lecture and you're learning about big data and machine learning. But you also may learn about truth from a, like, a historical perspective with a history professor talking about colonialism and indigenous territory. So you explore this broad notion of truth in core one with examples like that. And then afterwards you take core two and you can choose from a range of core two classes, each of which is taught by either one professor or team taught with two professors. So it's still interdisciplinary and it, the more specific in topic than core one. Then in your second year at Scripps, you take core three in which you focus on more specialized topics and then you develop an independent research project. Because of course, Scripps students have a shared academic and intellectual experience. Then fast forward to your senior year at Scripps, you also have something in common. Every script student does a senior thesis. And so you get, to pick, you get to pick a problem or a topic within your major or majors. About a quarter of our students have two majors. So you get to research and explore that problem or topic and spend senior year becoming an expert on it. And that's what I love about the four years at Scripps is that you have something in common with your peers at the beginning of your time and at the end of your time here. So you have that shared experience with CORE and then again with thesis. And this allows our community to be a tight-knit and collaborative one. And that's really important to us as a women's college. Um, a women's college is a place where, simply put, women support other women. I had no idea that I would end up at a women's college. And actually, that's really common. The person that I am today is because of the community that I found at Scripps. It's a community focused on building each other up, not down, and knowing that your success is not in conflict with another's. 
students form community in a lot of ways outside the classroom, whether it's, you know, joining the Baking for Justice Club or leading a hike in Southern California for the Outdoor Wilderness Leadership Club, or even training your peers to be a, a barista at our infamous uh, student run coffee house. Another one of the ways we bond as a community is through our graffiti wall tradition. This tradition has been going on since 1931. Every graduating class at Scripps gets a spot on the wall and they get to paint whatever they feel depicts their time on campus. Some of these murals are quirky and lighthearted, like there's one that says, woman under construction from 2003, and that's when we were building a new dorm. But a lot of them are, you know, serious and more challenging. There's one that just says, stop the war, and that's in reference to the Vietnam War when that was happening. Or even last year's class, which references climate change and support, uh, student support on campus. So that's what I love about this wall, is that it represents what was happening during your time at Scripps, how you were affected by the world around you, and you get to leave your, your mark on this place before you graduate. And for years to come, your mural will inspire future Scripps students to think about what this place means to them. So when you go to a woman's college like Scripps, you kind of end up thinking about history a lot. Who came before you, our traditions, but equally, if not more so, you look to the future. How am I going to contribute to society and make this world a better place for those after me? You kind of get the sense of urgency and passion to leave your mark, and you do so at a place that is supportive, but also challenging. A place that is empowering and allows you to empower others. When you're at a place where female leadership is the norm, you also get to redefine what leadership means. And you just think about things a little differently. You ask those tough questions, like I mentioned with CORE. And you're at a place that values your voice, your identity. You already have a voice, but a woman's college is a place where you get to further develop it. So you may find that what you're looking for in a college experience is what you can find at a woman's college. Uh, and as I end my presentation here, I strongly encourage you just to keep one or look at one woman's college on your list. It doesn't even have to be scripts. Just, just do, just pick one. Um, because a woman's college can be the place that you never knew that you needed. And the benefit of going to scripts, as you've already learned, is that you have the best of both worlds, an empowering women's college experience, but immersed in a co-ed environment at the same time. So with that, I will uh, end here about scripts and turn it over to my colleague at Claremont McKenna College. Awesome, thank you, Anna. Um, so really excited to share a little bit of information with you all today about Claremont McKenna College. I wanna talk a little bit about our history as a college, our mission, um, our academic opportunities, different types of student opportunities related to your career development, and then also share a little bit about um, the application process, just a couple points on that. Um, so in terms of CMC, one of the important things about us is our founding. So we were founded in 1946. Um, I know Tom was talking about Pomona doesn't have a thing. I think we very much are one of the schools that does have a thing. In 1946, we were founded. That was coming out of World War II. And so a lot of our early students and even our founders were veterans who were coming back from the war um, to get an education, many of whom were supported by things like the GI Bill. Um, and so that was a big part of our early, early mission was to provide a space for veterans to get a little bar arts education and reintegrate back into society, getting leadership positions within government, within business and the professions. And I think you see that legacy carrying on a lot to this day. You see a lot reflected in our academic programs, for example. Um, as some of you may know, some of the more popular programs that we are known for on our campus um, include economics, government, international affairs. We've got some really cool interdisciplinary programs as well. Um, one of them being politics, um, philosophy and economics, which combines each of those three different areas to build that major. We've got a really cool program that combines environmental analysis with economics and politics as well. So if you're at all interested in thinking about sort of environmental issues and how that might intersect with government policy or economic decisions, that can be a great program for you. And so we, we do have a lot of different offerings in terms of the interdisciplinary programs, both in the social sciences. You'll find some in the natural sciences as well. We've got a really cool program called Science Management, uh, which combines you know, any science food you might be interested in with business management. I've seen some really cool combinations coming out of that. Um, and then also our three, two program, which combines economics and engineering uh, within a five year span. So a lot of different programs that we have offered here at CMC um, in a lot of ways, the uniting thread across a lot of our students interests um, is sort of their social awareness and how they, they always are thinking about the work that they do and how that relates to sort of these broader issues of political or economic or global affairs across the social sciences, across the humanities, um, across the sciences as well. So that interdisciplinary focus um, is really big here at CMC. I think another part of our educational mission um, is we really want to be a practical liberal arts college. Um, we really want to give our students that experience of being at a liberal arts college, coming into CMC, not having to necessarily have a declared major or like a track of, the, of study necessarily, but really coming in and having the ability to explore, to take classes, 
is in different areas. Um, you have two full years until the end of your sophomore year to actually declare a major here at CMC. So it gives you a lot of freedom to explore different areas. Um, but at the same time, we always wanna make sure that you can take that knowledge that you're learning in the classroom and apply that to the outside world and to make an impact in some tangible ways. So we have a big focus here, um, both on career opportunities and career development for our students, and then also on hands-on research opportunities as well. Um, you can see the current slide up right now. It has a little bit of information about our career opportunities. This is one of my favorite parts about CMC. In a lot of ways, we really blend this culture of a liberal arts college and sort of um, professional culture as well. A lot of our students are very much go-getters. They'll really come to CMC a lot of times with an idea of ultimately where they want to be um, at some point in terms of their career. Um, be that, you know, working in consulting or working as a public policy analyst um, or maybe working and starting their own business or working in public health. Um, but at the same time, they'll have that low bars kind of mindset and that intellectual curiosity. About 95% of our students do internships during their time here at CMC, so that's a very prominent part of the experience. Um, most of the students that I know will do more than one internship while they're here throughout the summers between each of the school years here at CMC. Um, each summer we provide nearly $2 million to fund different internship projects. Um, as you might have seen, we're only 1,300 students, and so $2 million for 1,300 students per summer, that really adds up to a lot for each of our students. Um, we want our students to really be able to access any different types of opportunities they might be interested in um, career-wise. Um, if it's studying abroad over the summers as well, or maybe doing, um, maybe doing their own research projects, we really want to foster that. For all of our students who are the first in their families to go to college, and then for all the students who receive any type of financial aid, um, we guarantee a summer internship stipend of $5,000 for the summer after your freshman year, which I think is a really incredible opportunity. Um, and again, it's really about making sure that finances aren't a barrier for our students exploring these different interests that they might have. Um, another way that we really get our students to apply their learning outside the classroom is through our two domestic study abroad programs. We've got one in Washington, D.C., and we've got another one in Silicon Valley. Um, D.C. program um, happens during the school year, during the semester, where you can go and you can work full time in an internship position, oftentimes related to law and policy. We've had students going to work in the White House. We've had them going to work in Congress, the United Nations Refugee Agency, the Environmental Protection Agency. Um, the classes that you take there focus on government and international affairs. And you can also go to our program in Silicon Valley, um, very much focused on the technology industry in Northern California. We've had students working at tech startups. We've had students working at large um, larger companies like Facebook, for example. I know a couple who've gotten full-time job opportunities coming out of those internships. Um, so again, there's a lot of different ways in which we try to apply our learning through these career experiences. Um, for both those programs, um, about 10% of our students will do those and all of your scholarships and financial aid, they also carry over as well. So you can have those expenses covered while you're sort of applying your learning. And we also have 11 different research centers focused on a broad range of topics. So if you're the type of person, you have an idea of something that you are interested in and a question that you want to pursue or a research topic, we've got a lot of resources and funding for you to be able to do that. Um, through our 11 different research centers, you can focus on topics related to local government. Um, our local government center is doing work on gerrymandering in Southern California. They're looking at um, basically you know, how to better redraw political district lines in our area to reflect the changing demographics. Um, we've got environmental um, sciences research center. We've got a center focused on international affairs, human rights. So there's a lot of ways in which you can get involved um, and some really cool hands-on work um, beginning as early as your freshman year and paid job opportunities here at CMC. Um, and I would also say another thing that really unites our students going sort of along with that desire to make an impact is that you'll find a plethora of sort of intellectual diversity here. You encounter students who are liberal, students who are moderate, you find students who are conservative, you find that full political spectrum. I think that creates an atmosphere for some very engaging conversations, whether that's in the classroom, um, whether that's you know in the Athenaeum where we have a constant rotation of speakers coming in to give presentations on various topics and to share their ideas. Um, I think that also creates a very unique um, set of ways in which our students engage in social change work. Um, you'll find students who want to use the tools of business and are thinking about social entrepreneurship to solve um, different um, social problems. You'll find students who are invested in things like community organizing. You'll find students doing human rights research work. Um, so again, this is a plethora of ways in which our students are involved in sort of taking their learning outside the classroom. The last thing that I want to talk a bit about is the application process. We are test optional for this coming year. Um, we are also um, need blind for all of our domestic applicants. We are need aware for international students. Um, about 10% of our students will receive merit scholarships as well. Um, and definitely, you know, happy to chat more offline about the, the ways in which you apply for those. Um, but yeah, I want to now, um, don't want to take up too much time. So I want to pass it over to Roberto at Harvey Mudd.
Thank you, Sam. Um, and again, welcome everyone. We're excited to talk to you about our colleges and hopefully you're learning everything that you need to. Um, as I mentioned, Assistant Director of Admissions at Harvard Mudd College, I've been here for about four years. Um, and to be quite sincere with you, as my colleagues have mentioned, we all have either mission statements or something that drives our college, drives our what we do, right? And so what is it about Mudd um, that drives everything that we do? Well, we're a relatively younger college, uh, founded in 1955, and I'll talk about that here in a second, but what really drives us is our mission statement, right? This mission set statement says, we seek to educate mathematicians, scientists, engineers, who are well-versed in those areas, but who are also well-versed in the humanities, the social sciences, and the arts. So you can assume leadership positions in those roles um, and be aware of the type of impact your work has in society, right? And so that really trickles into everything that we do on our campus. Um, from the majors that we have, we only offer 10 majors. So you have to have a pretty good idea that you, have, that you want to study STEM if you're looking at Harvey Mudd, uh, because all of our majors are in STEM. We do have some joint majors, um, but some of them are computer science, you know, uh, joint majors in biology and chemistry, chemistry, um, physics, mathematics, and an uh, engineering program. Here we have students working on a underwater robot that students get to be exposed to usually their third semester or so at Harvey Mudd. Um, and so part of that comes into our academics, right? So 70% of our courses, students will be taking in STEM courses. A third of those, so about half of those will be in what's called the Common Core that all students are required to take. Uh, virtually students will be taking classes in every one of our departments, um, including our humanities, social science and arts departments. Um, so every student is required to go through this core. The other half of that 70% is your major courses and you're not required to declare a major until the end of your sophomore year. 30% of those courses will be taken in the humanities, social science, and the arts, HSA for short. This is an opportunity for students to take classes at the other colleges as well, in addition to our department, right? So we want our students to be able to study not just STEM, but also um, subjects outside of it and see how interdisciplinary all these subjects are. Related to the mission, research is also important to our students. Every student is required to, to do research on our campus. It can be as simple as professors reaching out to sophomores only, for example, and saying, hey, I have these five slots open this summer submit applications and professors will extend those invitations over. We're strictly undergraduate institution, so there's a lot of opportunity for our students to do research here on our campus and to take advantage of this as undergrad students. Um, as far as the, there's a capstone project, but there's also a clinic project that students will be uh, able to do. So this clinic project is an industry sponsored opportunity for students to work with clients that we've worked in the past, Google, SpaceX, Toyota, Mercedes-Benz. It's a long list of computer science and engineering pro, uh, companies that we've worked with that students can take advantage of potentially solving problems for these companies, right? And so one of my favorite ones in recent years was with Bob, uh, Bobcat. Uh, they wanted to autonomously program one of their tractors to uh, move around objects, you know, um, with no GPS available, right? So our students were able to successfully do that. And there's a long list of clinic projects that exist. Um, so I definitely encourage you to check out that website because it is something that has strengthened our engineering and computer science programs here on our campus. As you can see, some postgraduate endeavors here, um, about two thirds of our students end up going um, into industry. Again, if you're interested in all the companies that our students are working with, you're more than welcome to find that information on our website. Um, and the, the schools that they're going to as well, average salaries, um, all that information is public information on our website that you can find. Um, and we have a pretty neat problem where we tend to have more corporate recruiters than we do have graduating seniors every year. So our students are able to find potential employers um, at when they're graduating here at Harvard Mudd, right? And so I think the last thing we're gonna talk about here is the student experience. So we do have something that is an honor code that I think really puts the trust in our community, really um, lets students be themselves. Uh, students are able to, basically what the honor code says is, don't be that person, don't be the person who jeopardizes the community's academic integrity or jeopardizes that community's you know, safety, uh, but it comes with a lot of trust, right? Students trust each other, trust that they'll do the right thing. Professors will give students take home exams, for example, if you need access to lab materials or, or study spaces after hours, we trust that you will do the right thing, right? And so something that really, really influences our community and you know, students are able to feel comfortable among their peers, among peers who are interested in STEM, but also are not just limited to STEM. They wanna study subjects outside of um, STEM themselves, right? Um, because of this strictly undergrad focus, professors really, you get to really engage with professors, not just through research, but 
on a more personable level. You get to, you know, you can see how small our student to faculty ratio is here. Um, and definitely a lot of wonderful opportunities for our students to thrive and really focus in on the subjects that they're interested in. Um, the last thing I want to do before I hand it over to um, Alex is we have a fly-in program, a, a fly-in program, right, a virtual program coming up uh, relatively soon. The application is open. It is called FAST. I encourage you to check that out. Um, we will be having three virtual programs this fall. So please check that out. And Alex, I will pass that over to you now. All right, thank you, Roberto. So just to uh, introduce myself again, my name is Alex Morse and I'm an admission counselor with Pitzer College. Uh, and my main hope for you as I am presenting and talking about Pitzer is that you will come away understanding Pitzer's values because I think that, and Anna Marie alluded to this earlier on, um, we are a very social justice driven institution. Um, and so our values are really sort of at the heart of everything that we're doing. So to get started, I'll talk to you about each of our five core values. Um, and starting out, so the first core value that I like to talk about is student engagement. The reason I start there is I think none of the rest of it would be possible without really heavy student engagement from our student body. Um, we actually have one of the largest student senates per capita in the United States. Uh, even though we have like just over a thousand students every year, we'll sometimes have 50 or 60 student senators and people participating in student government. Um, we also have a shared governance system. This means that students are involved at every level of the college, helping to determine policy uh, and to really make the college in their vision in the way that they imagine it. Um, that's been a big part of our experience of COVID. Students are working with uh, faculty and administrators all the time on what we can do to maintain our campus community in light of everything that's happening in the world. And I think it's wonderful that we have students involved at that level. Um, the next core value I want to talk about is interdisciplinary learning. So this is something that's going to be present at all of the colleges uh, in the five C's, of course, because we are liberal arts colleges. Um, but I think that we have probably the loosest boundaries between our disciplines in that we actually don't have academic departments. Um, we have something called field groups. And these field groups allow us to intermingle a lot more. Sometimes we'll have even co-taught or tri-taught classes. I know one of my students took a class that was tri taught by a, uh, sorry, a psychology professor, a philosophy professor, and a neuroscience professor. So very loose bounds between the departments, and that allows for a lot of creativity when it comes to interdisciplinary learning at our college. Um, the next core value I want to talk about is intercultural understanding, and I really want to highlight our study abroad opportunities here. So while many colleges will limit study abroad to just junior year, just one program, at Pitzer you can actually study abroad up to three times and any time after your freshman year. So you as a student could spend an entire summer and two semesters abroad in different countries if you would like. Pitzer also has our own study abroad programs that are run in other countries, which I think is pretty cool. Um, we have faculty all around the world, which I think is a, a great indicator of our commitment to intercultural understanding. I want to talk about uh, the next core value, environmental sustainability. So of course, I wish you could visit Pitzer and see it for yourself, but we actually have 75% uh, native and drought resistant plants on campus. So instead of having your typical sort of roses, uh, rose bushes and oak trees, and then you can see it right there, we have cacti and succulents and other pointy, interesting, colorful plants all across campus. Um, I often describe it as walking through a desert botanical garden when you're walking through some parts of campus. Uh, the reason we do this is that it allows us to save literally thousands of gallons of water each year. Um, in addition to that, we compost 14 tons of food every year and we are constantly pushing the college and the systems of the college to be as sustainable as possible. Um, I often say to students, if you are interested in environmental policy or environmental science, Pitzer is a wonderful place to be because not only will you be living that value, but you'll be given great opportunities to study it as well. Uh, the last core value I want to address is social responsibility. So when it comes to social responsibility, there is so much that I could say to you about what Pitzer students, faculty, and staff are doing. Um, but I have one good big number that I think describes it well. Um, la in the last uh, calendar year, our entire Pitzer community did over 100,000 hours of community service. 
Um, and given that there's not that many of us, I think that that shows how deep our commitment really is uh, to social responsibility, to community engagement, and to really serving our local as well as global community. Um, so if you're, you're looking for the social justice school, you want to protest, you want to be, uh, you know, part of the group that is pushing our society to be a better place for all people, I think Pitzer is a great place to be for that. Um, I want to wrap up by talking about admission a little bit and financial aid. So in terms of financial aid, we are 100% need met institution. Um, this means that if you are admitted, we are very determined to make it financially possible for your family to be able to send you to Pitzer. Um, we also are test optional, um, but fun fact, we've been test optional since 2003. So uh, there's a lot of test optional happening out there in the world right now. Um, and I think that is a wonderful thing to see at, at colleges across the country. Um, but it's something we're very experienced with and very proud of. Um, and the last thing I want to say before we move into the Q&A section of uh, this uh, event is that we are hosting virtual events, live events constantly. Um, we have live virtual tours that are run by a current student. We have live information sessions that are run by an admission counselor like myself, as well as live interviews available if you are applying to college this year, if you're a senior. Um, so definitely come engage with us. If you want to learn more, we are on Zoom all the time, just waiting for you. So that is uh, the, my wrap up of the Pitzer Spiel. Solomon, you want to take it? Yeah, for sure. It was great hearing about each of the different schools. Um, now it's like we've got a lot of questions, so we'll try to get through as many of these as we can in the remaining time. Um, so we'll go through some of the questions. One of the ones that really stood out, um, so a student asked, what is your advice to applicants interested in more than one 5C or maybe all 5Cs? So how do you narrow down the choice of schools? Do people often apply to more than one or two? Um, does anyone want to take this one? Sure, I can take it. Um, I think sometimes people have this misconception that like I have to pick the one for me and that like you're like this is like a marriage proposal and, like and it doesn't work that way like we all are we all work together because like we like each other like right we wouldn't be part of a consortium if we didn't want to have this collaborative environment so I'm not like checking and spying on you and seeing like oh did you put down Pitzer as well on your common application like if so denied like that's not how it goes um we encourage and expect students if you're interested in the idea of the Claremont Colleges like it's an awesome thing. Like it's a really exciting and dynamic um, and unique environment as hopefully we've been able to articulate today. So my advice to you is basically to cast your net wide. You know, there might be things that resonate with certain admissions officers and priorities with that particular admission cycle at one Claremont College more than another. And it might be different for every school and you might get into all of them that you want and, and you might get into a few or not. Um, but it never hurts to, if you're interested in the idea of the Claremont Colleges and you learn about some of the programs and uh, elements of the environments that each school has, and some are going to gel well with you more than others. You can absolutely apply to as many or as little as you feel called to. Um, we don't data share, we don't know or mind if you apply to more than one school. It is completely celebrated and accepted, and we all have our own different policies and offices and processes, deadlines, all these different things. Um, so it's important to clarify with each school what those are as you go in and not just expect every school to have the exact same policies. Um, but know that once you're admitted, you have access to all five and that's the beauty of the consortium. So you like that, it's, it's completely there for you. Awesome, the next question, um, and we got several questions about this, really just cross-registration at the five Cs. So across the five colleges, how accessible are classes at the various schools? We have some other questions sort of just about, is there a limitation to how many classes you can cross-register in? Um, does anyone want to take this one? I can take this one. So uh, I would say that for one, the rules are going to be different per college. So I know that each college has maybe slightly different restrictions on what you can do in terms of like how many classes, can you major or minor at another school and things like that. The other thing is that classes will have their own restrictions as well. So for the most part, what I've heard from students is that class priority is given based upon registration times for one and also whether or not you're a major. From there, there doesn't tend to be a lot of like, oh, we only want these many students from another college. Sometimes classes will have designations. So they'll say like, 
we have, you know, five spots for Scripps students and five spots for Pitzer students, five spots for CMC students, you know, and the rest are for our Harvey Mudd students or whatever it might be. So it's very fluid. It depends on the college and whatever their policies are. It depends on the classes and the professors, what their policies are. Um, but overall, we really, cross-registration is like our bread and butter. So we want it to be accessible for students. And so everyone is going to be working together to make sure there are as little boundaries as possible to you really chasing your interests. Great, great. Um, so another question, um, we had a few related to the topic of research as well. So the question was just, can students at different colleges access research opportunities from another college? Does anyone want to, um, to try to answer this one? Sure, I can try. Um, so I think in general research, um, you know, each college will manage its own like fellowship programs and like, you know, post-grad programs uh, and academic programs, including research. So there are going to be some things that uh, may be like some research opportunities that are only for students at that college. Um, but also research can be something that happens maybe more organically, like a professor's doing research and ask students in their class, like, hey, does anyone want to help me with this? Um, and in that case, because of cross-registration, if you're taking a class at, let's say you're a script student taking a class at MUD or Pomona, um, and it's a class-based research opportunity, well then, yeah, you can do that. But there are going to be some like institutional research grants. Um, so just kind of, again, it, it depends. We like that phrase a lot. It depends. <laughs> Awesome. Um, another question was just related to application advice. And so one student asked, what suggestions would you give to an applicant that is struggling to express themselves and convey who they are in their written essays um, as they're applying to the five C's? Well, I, I, can, I can try to take this one. I think one of the things that we all look for in our admissions process um, is that we, we are holistic in how we're viewing applicants. And so we're looking at a lot of different factors. It's not just numbers driven, um, you know. So there's a lot of aspects that come into play. We're looking at personal essays. We're looking at extracurricular involvement. Um, what we really want to see from our students um, is that they are engaged both inside the classroom and outside the classroom as well, that they're excited about ideas, that they have passions, that they'll ultimately be positive, um, you know, participants in the communities that we have here at the various colleges. Um, I'd also say each of the colleges, hopefully you're able to get a sense that we have these unique missions um, and these different values across our institutions. And so I think if you can sort of communicate and, and sort of demonstrate um, how you believe you are a good fit for these different um, institutions and how you maybe some of our values resonate with you, I think that can ultimately um, make your application stronger as well. We've got so many questions. I was looking for the one. I saw that, a lot of questions about study abroad. So was it okay if I maybe talk about that a little bit? Sure. There was a lot of questions about that. Um, so study abroad, we all do it. It's something we all love. Um, and I think that that's something that's great is that each of the five schools is going to have different programs and offerings that you can definitely take advantage of all five schools offerings. That's not uncommon to see students, you know, take advantage of study abroad programs or study away programs at the other schools. So for example, at Pomona, one of our students, Emma Vorenberg, actually Emma and Bryce, both had tour guides. They both studied abroad in Amman, Jordan through a program actually that I believe was, was coordinated through CMC. Um, they also, uh, I know of several students who have done, Claremont McKenna also has a Washington DC semester program and a Silicon Valley um, semester internship program. More Pomona students did that program last semester for the spring semester than actual Claremont McKenna students. So I think sometimes people have this misconception that like it's lip service that we just say like, oh, like you can take things at the other five schools, but like we really only care about our own people. Like that's not what it's like. And I think, you know, I just gave you evidence as to the fact that it really is this very intermingled and collaborative opportunity. Um, but with study abroad, it's absolutely something that's very um, accepted and supported by the five schools. Um, most colleges, I, you know, I can't speak on all, all, on all five, but it's important to clarify with each one how your tuition and fees and financial aid transfer over. But if people just want to give me a nod that it would cost the same to study abroad at your institution as it would to be on campus. Yep, we all have the same policy around openness, around doing something like study abroad, and it's not a additional cost. It's not something that, you know, is an add-on to your experience. It's something that um, at Pomona, over half the students will do it. I know it's probably a very similar, if not higher, percentage at some of the other Claremont colleges. So 
it is something that's fully supported and accepted and you know being able to go out and see the world and take the lessons that you've learned on campus at the Claremont Colleges to a completely different environment um, is a really impactful experience and one that will carry with you for the rest of your life it will help you build independence it will help you gain new skills in a language it will help you meet new people have a greater network across the world so um, all the Claremont Colleges have a very global approach and appreciation and study abroad is just a great way to take that to the next level. Awesome. Uh, we had some other questions about housing as well. Um, there's a question just about is housing guaranteed for all four years and how many students live on campus. Um, I know across the college we're a very residential community. I don't know if anyone in particular wants to take a stab at that one. I mean, I can only speak for, for MUD itself, right? Like we, we do guarantee um, housing. 95% of our students choose to live on campus for four years, right? So they're choosing to return which speaks volumes about our communities, right? It speaks volumes about students wanting to be engaged with their peers, with their, um, you know, with their academic peers or social peers. Um, so again, I, I would imagine that it's pretty similar across the five colleges, but as Anna Marie said earlier, it, it, it depends, right? It depends on the college um, um, and it'll vary. But for us, we're pretty much everyone lives on campus with the exception of the few transfer students that might be commuter students or, um, you know, whatever that looks like for each respective college. Yeah, and, and thank you, Roberto. There's something I forgot to mention earlier when I was talking about the, in the overview of the Claremont Colleges, but um, just given what we've all said about being residential, uh, the social experience across the five schools is something that's very tight knit. Um, so when there's an event at this school that night or like an acapella performance at that school that night, students across the five schools really do mix and mingle on any given Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday during the day, Saturday night. Um, and given our proximity to Los Angeles, there are also a lot of students who take advantage of the Southern California opportunities, but the weekends in Claremont are not, um, they're the very lively weekends. There's just a lot happening and because we're residential. So I just wanted to clarify that that I didn't say earlier. Awesome, great point. Um, another question was just, um, you know, do students applying with multiple interests? So like, for example, a student who might have diverse interests in maybe humanities and then also the STEM um, areas, do they come across as unfocused? Um, and then maybe um, if any of y'all have advice as to like, you know, how they sort of could communicate those diverse interests and how that um, might be received in our admissions process. Yeah, I can take this one. So um, one concept I know we talk about in the admission world is like round versus pointy students. This is a thing. Um, and pointy meaning you put most of your time into one thing or one type of thing. Round meaning you put your time maybe into lots of things, anything from athletics to math and science to humanities to volunteering. Um, I obviously for each of our colleges, the answer is it depends for depending on our process and what we're looking for. But we are liberal arts colleges, and so we are looking for students who would like to gain a breadth as well as a depth in whatever they're studying. And that means that it is a-okay for you to be doing more than one thing. You know, it, it doesn't come off as unfocused. It comes off as you chasing whatever passion you might have. Um, so that is the beauty not only of us and the five C's, but also of liberal arts is that, you know, you can be a math major and be in the acapella group, right? Um, so that's going to be true pretty much across the board for our colleges. Awesome. So we had another question just about transportation and accessibility in, in the surrounding Claremont area um, and how we sort of relate to the local places. I can take that and just answer really briefly. Um, I think the, the Claremont colleges in general and the town of Claremont is very walkable. Um, all the colleges sort of as Anna had mentioned, you know, are all within one square mile. So they're all within walking distance of each other. You can also walk to the nearby town of Claremont, which is sort of a um, suburban area. You go to downtown Claremont. It's about a 10 to 15 minute walk, depending on where you're at in campus. And they've got some restaurants and a little bit of shopping. Then you can also take the train into downtown Los Angeles. Um, that's about a 50 minute train ride. So many of our students will go into LA on the weekends, for example. Um, so I think that's sort of the most common is, is walking. A lot of students will students will skateboard as well. Um, and I know some students will bring cars. Um, I know at least at CMC, um, for our freshman students, they, they, don't, they typically won't have cars on campus. I think that's not allowed. But after that, you will have uh, many of our students who also might bring cars as well. So another question um, that kept coming up was just related to the application process for this coming fall. 
Um, and I know it's just super different. There's been so much that's gone on just in the past few months and it's really changed um, the way our students have experienced, um, you know, sort of high school and going into their senior year. I know it's, it's gonna be very different. Um, and so do, does anyone maybe have any advice or thoughts on like how students can kind of best go about navigating the college application process um, given COVID and given all the changes. Um, so any, any, any advice, any words of wisdom? I would say, sorry, Tom, I'm a, I let you can come in after, but I would say, I think the first thing and the, the thing that we're reiterating, at least in our office, I can imagine other places, but make sure you are healthy, right? You're staying safe and you and your loved ones are staying safe. I think that's what's really important right now. There is a lot of uncertainty. Um, even on our side, right, I think we, we can easily admit that there is a lot of ambiguity right now that um, is challenging how we think about education and how we plan on providing education. Um, but just know that engage with us virtually, right, like do, with, do it, what you can, right. So there are optional interviews for some of our colleges. There are virtual tours that we're offering. There's programming. Um, shout out to Tom and his Instagram. He does some awesome content. On, on IG, yeah, yeah, I got you. So yeah, there's definitely different ways to, to engage with our college, and not just our colleges, but any college right now, um, to learn about who they are, their value systems, and, and, and what they're, they're interested in, and how that can fit you as a student, right? You, you hear that a lot about selected colleges and fit and what that means, right? Really do that research and see if that, those values of that college align with yours, and, and you can be a good fit for that institution. Awesome. And uh, how, how are we looking on time? Um, I wasn't sure if, uh, if anyone else was going to chime in with that or we have two minutes. So we can either add to that or if was there another question, Salm? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so we could definitely bring up another question. A few students were just asking about how the Claremont's adjusted to COVID-19. Um, so if anyone wants to talk about, I know each of the institutions have responded in, 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 in different ways. So much I know it's been individual to each of our schools. Um, but if anyone wants to talk about, you know, how we sort of um, weathered the situation. I can go very quickly. I mean, it's seven, for, for me, it's 7.59, I'm, I'm in, on the East Coast. But um, I think each school, you know, has really kept the health and safety um, of students, faculty, and staff at their respective campuses at the forefront of the decisions that they've made as a college. And many of these, these decisions have been very painful and hard. Um, and traumatic for many people actually it's been something that's it's not a easy thing to say you know we have to go virtual in the fall for our, our semesters especially when many of our students look look forward to the community building to the support to the resources that these campuses provide for them and, and so many of our students are coming from these spectrums of backgrounds that um, the situation has really put a wrench in, in, in kind of the community that we've been crafted to create and the ideal world of Claremont that we aspire to be. Um, and I think that each of the colleges has been mindful of supporting one another and having open communication across the five schools to best serve their individual students, but also the consortium as a whole. Um, so I do know that, you know, the majority of the, of the institutions here have made announcements of a fully uh, virtual fall, given the uh, really recent surge and upright um, surge in cases um, and the challenges that Southern California, in particular in the United States, is facing when it comes to combating COVID-19. Um, so obviously not a decision that was taken lightly, um, lots of huge ramifications and modifications that have to be taken into account um, to make that decision happen. But um, at the end of the day, I think one that was made in line with public health guidelines, um, keeping you know at the forefront the health and safety and well-being um, of all people involved. Um, so we're looking forward, I think, to a time when the consortium can be back um, in its full glory um, as this collaborative and open space um, for all students. But um, until then, um, we, we are able to do these great presentations together as a virtual cohort and still wrap the power of the five C's in, in just a yet another way, um, in a more innovative and entrepreneurial way and, and a flexible way as well. So. Hopefully that answers your question. Each school is going to again have different. It depends. <laughs> is the the catchphrase of the day um, is going to be something that you can clarify with each school. Um, and just you know, knowing that we just have just run short on time, I notice a lot of questions in the chat about specific admissions policies, about testing, about whether you measure demonstrated interest. Do you care about interviews? Do you have early decision? Do you have all of these things? I think is you know, hopefully this session as a five as a five consortium overview was a great you know kind of 
crash course in all things Claremont College as it just kind of lays out the lay of the land for you. Um, and we hope this is a jumping off point for you, kind of as Roberto mentioned, we hope that this gives you a chance. We all offer virtual tours, information sessions, individual school Q, Q and A's and opportunities to meet with our respective offices. So, you know, if you have these specific questions for that Pitzer admissions office, for that Harvey Mudd admissions offices, for Pomona, definitely go and take advantage of our opportunities going forward. I think actually you will be emailed a follow up email after this presentation as a thank you um, with some of those resources and kind of our, our respective visit pages so that you can take advantage of those individual sessions, knowing that hopefully at this point, um, you can start kind of diving more deep into that individual um, Claremont College research. Um, and we hope that this is not the, the end of the road for you in terms of researching the amazingness that we have here in Claremont. Um, so on behalf of all the presenters, thank you so much for being here with us tonight. And um, if you have any questions, please contact us. But thank you so much.